Hey y'all, it's Beth. Welcome back to my channel. Y'all, I just realized that I have not done a good old fashioned Goodwill haul in a really long time. I've been doing a lot of shopping, but I haven't really sat down and showed you what I got from Goodwill in a while. So I'm gonna show you a good old fashioned Goodwill haul, y'all. So much for joining me today. I'm super excited to show you all of these things because most of these things have like a spring vibe to them. I'll be honest, I really like warm weather. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want it to be hot, but warm, yes. So I am looking forward to spring. And the day that I went into a couple of Goodwills, um, I found all these things that reminded me of spring. Maybe I was just looking for them. So the things that I'm gonna show you today, I actually have already put in inventory. So they've been washed and the price tags are off of them. And they come from a couple of little small trips here and there where I may have picked up just one thing or maybe I picked up one or two things, but it wasn't enough to make a haul. So I decided to put it in a little box and then I got really busy over one of the weekends and I just decided I was gonna wash and inventory everything. So let me show you what I got. Okay, so there are just a few things from Goodwill, like I said, but I do have a couple of things that I got from my parents when I was back in South Carolina and I forgot to show you those too. So I thought I'd just throw it all together, okay? All right, so the first thing that I got, I believe I paid $5 for this if I'm not mistaken, but it is this beautiful little kind of like a zipper bag. I don't know if it's maybe a cosmetic bag or maybe just a small handheld purse. It doesn't have any kind of strap to it. It has a zipper on the inside, very, very clean. The sticker does say here, made in India. And I do know that it is beaded work. I actually had a friend of mine uh, see it and said that that is all hand beaded, but I loved the little butterfly on that. It was in great condition, no staining, none of the beads are missing, and I really like that. So I wanna say I paid $4.99. Could have been $2.99. Y'all, don't get me to lying because I don't know. But I thought it was pretty, so I picked this up. Now, all of the items that I'm going to show you today will be available in upcoming live sales, or I may put them in my booth or my upcoming show that I have, another Junk Hippie show. So if you see something that you're interested in, go ahead and email me at scprincess1 at comcast.net. I put it on the screen for you there, and I'll also put it in the description below. Sometimes uh, I have viewers that will reach out to me when they see something, and since everything is already in inventory, I can let them know if the item is still available for purchase. Okay, the next item that I picked up was a little Fitz and Floyd. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I love Fitz and Floyd. I think their dishes and their little plates and things are very decorative. A lot of times you can hang them on the wall if you run the little string or the wire through there, but I love this little spring bouquet of flowers. There were no chips or cracks in this little dish. I thought it would be super cute even in a bathroom or a guest bedroom, but maybe putting some hand soap and some towels beside that. But it does say Fitz and Floyd Essentials on the back and it says Spring Flowers there. So there is the marking. But again, so pretty and so spring. I'm ready, y'all. Another little spring item that I picked up made me think of Michelle at Newton's Cover because she loves cross-stitch and cruel. And I found this sweet, sweet little blue bird with the birdhouse and the pink flowers. Now this is a cross-stitch. It is beautifully done. I love all the spring colors. Again, look at those birds, y'all. So, so cute. This one is actually professionally framed. On the back, um, it has the little picture wire there. It has where it was framed. It even has the little bumpers so it doesn't mess up your wall. And I can't tell where it says, maybe Goodman's, but I can't tell what else it says. It's a little foil sticker there. So I picked this up as well and I really, really like this. It's a good little size too. It's a perfect little size for any room. So I picked that one up too. All right, y'all, I had to get this. 
I just loved it. It's a metal lunchbox of Curious George. Now, Curious George was one of my favorite little reads when I was younger and as a teacher because y'all, he gets into mischief I and kind of relate to him. But I thought this little metal lunchbox with the little plastic handle there doesn't have the little metal handle, but it does have the plastic handle. It was in really good shape, not a lot of rust, um, even on the inside, but it's in really great shape. Now, I cannot find a year on this, but it is marked more fun from shilling. Um, and I don't know what that means, but I don't, and I don't see a date on that. Not a lot of rust, even on the inside. There is a little bit in the corners, which made me think that somebody probably washed it, but did not dry it very well. Um, but it's in really good shape. So I picked that up and I love this bright little color, all the designs on it. And look, I'm sure he is up to some kind of mischief right there. I just love Curious George, y'all. Another little beautiful blue and spring color. I got this little handmade hobbyist piece, uh, little Victorian boot. Now, I love the design. Look at those designs on there. It almost reminded me of the little old lady who lived in the shoe because these look like windows to me, but I didn't see a door. Now, it does have ML80 on the bottom there, and you can tell that maybe they broke it, but they tried to repair it right here, and that was done prior to painting and um, firing because it's under the glaze, but I thought this would be so pretty with some little white flowers in there, y'all. That would be darling. Another item that I got that reminded me of spring is this beautiful little brass basket. And the best thing about this basket is y'all, look at the design and the handle to start with, but the handle actually moves. Now it's a little tight, but the handle can go up or down. Um, I think if you maybe put it, put a flower frog in here, or maybe now we would put styrofoam in there like that flower foam um, to make a little arrangement, that would be super cute. It is marked on the bottom made in Taiwan. So it is an older piece, but I love that the handle was hinged and I love the little scallop edge of the basket. So I picked that one up. I would love to see if maybe it would polish up. I'm not sure though. What do y'all think about polishing up all this brass? Do you think we should leave it in the patinaed state or do you think we should polish it up? Let me know in the comments what you think about cleaning up old brass. I just got a few more items from Goodwill, but I wanted to show them to you. I really, really love this one. Y'all, this one is marked Marshall Pottery. Um, and I believe that it is 81 right here, Marshall Pottery 81. And it says, hand turned in the ancient tradition by skilled craftsmen, Marshall Pottery. And, and it even still has the little sticker on there. But what I loved best about it was the front. Look at this beautiful blue coloring on there the butterflies and the flowers and the grass. I thought this was absolutely beautiful. And again, this reminded me of Michelle at Newton's Cupboard because I do know that at one point she was collecting the blue and gray or blue and tan pottery. Now it does have some crazing in there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. It did not have a lid on it. Maybe it did have a lid. Uh, maybe it never had a lid, but I thought maybe to put your utensils in there or even as a vase, just anything. But I really thought this was absolutely beautiful. And because it still had the sticker in it and it was handmade, I picked this up. Now I haven't looked this up to see anything about it. I do remember hearing about Marshall Pottery. And so I will be interested to see what the value of this little piece is. Okay, the last little piece I just wiped down. And when I was wiping it down, I noticed that it made noise. So it's a little strawberry with mouse recipe box. And y'all, how darling is that? Now that is darling. But when I bought it, I never noticed that there was tape right here. I also never noticed that there's something in there. Now it's taped, so I think we should open it up. It's a beautiful condition, no scratches or anything. Um, it says that it is a Jean 
L. Bryan file box to organize coupons, recipes, addresses. It says dividers are enclosed there. It does have a barcode, but I have no idea if there's recipes or just the dividers in there. So I brought my scissors to easily cut the tape so I don't cut. I hope nothing jumps out of this, y'all. Nope, nothing jumped out. It looks like what's in there may be some dividers. Let me see. All right, let me dump it out. And in here, it has a little thing that says, I love you. Let us love one another for love comes from God. And it says, you're really spiffy, sister, and I love you. 61893, love, Amy. Oh, I love this card. Oh my gosh, I love that. So it must have been a gift. And inside, it does have the A to Z little dividers here. So that's cool. And it also has some more dividers with stickers and another little pack. So two packs of dividers with stickers. And this one is for recipes because it says appetizers, main dish, um, beverages, miscellaneous, and then on the other side, it has the alphabet pieces there. So what a cool little find. Oh, I love that. And I love the fact that it has these darling little mice on there with the strawberries. All right, I'll have to take the tape off of that. I can't, I don't even know why I didn't notice that y'all, but I didn't notice it. That's all I got at Goodwill when I was shopping. Probably one or two days. I'd go in and I'd pick up one or two things here. And maybe I'd pick up one thing on the next day. So I thought I would just combine it all for you. And I want to show you a couple of things that I got from my parents when I was home at Christmas. So you know I shared the story of my dad and I fishing together when I was little. And if you missed that story, um, I'll link the video that it's in right above here in the iCards. Uh, Miss Martha actually bought me a little fishing lure that reminded me of a story for fishing with my dad. And when I went to see him, he found some vintage, possibly antique wooden um, fishing lures. And this is one of the new ones. It's kind of bigger, but look at the eyes on that little fella right here. And there are, it's painted on both sides. So there are eyes on both sides. And then he found this one as well. Now, of course, I told you I've already inventoried all of this stuff, so there are price tags on it. But this one has the little um, little teaser feather, I called it. That's not the right word, but that's what I call it. Uh, this one is a little bit more rustic, a little bit more rudimentary um, there. This one is pretty plain. Now, the next one we think could have possibly been an antique, but we're not really sure. I don't think that it's in its original state because of the state of the hook. I think that somebody may have put a new hook on this based on looking at it. But if we're looking at the wood, it basically is just like, it looks like a broken table leg. You know how the little chairs had the, the thin table legs? And that's what this looks like. Um, it's not really painted with anything. You can see it may may have had a little um, eye hook there, like to have the back of it or the, the top of it there to go on the fishing line. Somebody has put a little eye hook there, and this is a very new little three-prong hook, but the piece up at the top is not so new. So showing you this, I'm going to say that I think it was a piece of table leg. That's what I'm going with. So he gifted me these three for resale and I've already got those ready to go. And my mom knows I love cookbooks. And so she found me three vintage and antique cookbooks there. This one is um, their paperback. And this one is Improved Puritan Cookbook. And this is from Sears and Roebuck. There's the beautiful graphic on the front of this. I was looking through it to see if I could possibly find a date, and I did not find a date on here. It just says Sears and Roebuck. 
And I'm not sure if it went with maybe a food chopper because I'm reading it says, the Puritan food chopper is a utensil that should be in the kitchen of every household. In the preparation of nearly every meal, something has to be chopped. And by the use of the Puritan chopper, the work can be done easily, quietly, quickly, and with satisfactory results. The old fashioned chopping bowl and knife method of preparing meals is tiresome, noisy, slow, and out of date. It saves time, labor, and food. So maybe this came with a little chopper there, but it is chopped full, see what I did there, of um, little recipes, uh, and it is numbered. So I'm gonna show you that it says like number, what is this one, number nine, and it goes all the way to the back to number 206, which is cucumber pickles. And then it has a little place to write additional notes there. I'm not sure about that. Ugh, royal fruit cake. Here we go again with the fruit cake. There's royal fruit cake, white fruit cake, regular fruit cake, farmer's fruit cake. There's a lot of different kinds of fruit cake. And guess what, y'all? I don't like any of them. Do y'all like fruit cake? I asked y'all once before. I'll have to go back and read the comments again. Lots of pudding, um, spinach a la cream, cheese macaroni. Well, that I can do. But I guess you can do all of these recipes with your Puritan food chopper. Another little cookbook that she gifted me was the Potato Lover's Diet Cookbook. Now, potatoes and diet don't exactly go together in my book, but according to Barbara Gibbons, the Slim Gourmet, they go together. And this is, let me see if this one has a date on there. The Potato Lover's Diet Cookbook, 1973. It was copyrighted by the National Potato Promotion Board. Well, I guess if you work for the National Potato Promotion Board, you probably should put out a cookbook. Um, now, I don't think it's all white potatoes. I do think that they're talking about sweet potatoes. Oh, skinny corned beef and cabbage. Now, I do like that. Country chicken stew. Now, wait a minute. We could probably get behind some of this. Hmm. Potato and egg bake. Y'all, that looks really good. So I got this one as well. And I think I have so many cookbooks now that I think I might need an intervention and maybe even have a little sale on all these vintage cookbooks because I'm not cooking anything out of any of them. The last item I'm gonna show you today is another cookbook that was gifted to me by my mom and I really loved it for the graphics. It's actually falling apart, but it's called Reliable Recipes. Always welcome, Gallimut baking powder company. And I guess this is it here. I don't know how to pronounce that. So if somebody could put it phonetically in the chat, that would be great. But look at the little piece on the back. The graphics in this cookbook are just amazing. This little chubby boy here with his dog and his Gallimet baking powder, I guess that's what it is. Um, I thought that was super cute. Now the cover is completely falling apart, but here's some more graphics in the inside front cover, as well as on the cover page that says reliable recipes and helpful hints. But look at that little fella, isn't he darling? Let me see if there's a date on this one. Ooh, the pages are paper thin and the print is super small. Oof, what baking powder is? Well, that's something that I probably should know. Baking powder is not a food, but it is a preparer of food. A great many people through misleading advertisements have been led to believe that they eat baking powder, but that is not the case. Baking powder is put in the food, not to be part of it, like flour, but simply as a convenient measure for making the breads, cakes, and biscuits light and sweet. In fact, it is used only for the leveling gas it produces. Well, what do you know? It also talks about cream of tartar. I just love that. Ways to succeed. Oh, y'all, you know in my Bake With Me's when I say approximations count, I think that's rounding. 
I should probably be more um, precise. But I did turn to waffles. That can't be bad. Oh, look at these pictures. Y'all, look at those beautiful cakes and those color pictures and those confectionates. Oh, this is Gallimet Lady Baltimore Cake, page 25. And Gallimet Assorted Cake Squares, page 23. <gasps> Donuts and curlers. Yes, please. Now, there's a lot of good yummy things in this cookbook, especially in the sweet treats section. And since it's used for that, oh my gosh, look at this little fella. He says, now remember. Y'all, I just love this. Gallimet. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Gallimet baking powder saves three ways. You save when you buy it. You save when you use it. You save materials it is used with. True economy in cost, in time, in use. There you go. Well, y'all, that is super cute. And I hadn't had a chance to look through these. You know I love to look through cookbooks. So I'm definitely going to be taking um, a couple of glances through there and through some of the recipes. But I just love that cookbook. So that's all I got from my parents as well as from Goodwill. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoy this type of content where I go out thrifting and even go thrifting in my mom and dad's house and find some really cool things to show you, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. I want to take a moment to say thank you and welcome to all of my new subscribers. Y'all, it has been such a blessing to have this YouTube channel where I get to share my joys and delights about all things vintage antiques and just pretties and sweet treats with with other people who enjoy the same thing. So thank you so much to all of my subscribers who've been with me from the beginning, middle, and now all my new subscribers. I can't wait to see what this coming year will bring and how many new friends I get to meet. So if you're watching this video and you're not already subscribed, I'd love to have you be part of my YouTube family. And you can do that by subscribing to my channel, which is free. You also wanna make sure that you click that notification bell. So anytime I post a video, or have a live event, you'll be the first one notified that that video and that content is out there for you and you can join me. I love to read your comments in my videos and I love to chat with you in my live chats. Even just drop in and say hello on a live sale. Just hang out in the chat with us. Maybe you know something that I don't know. I know in recent videos, I've had new people come in and be able to identify objects for me and that is fabulous. So Thank you so much to all of my viewers and subscribers. I'm so excited to be on this journey with you. So that's it, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, y'all stay pretty and be sweet. Bye-bye.